Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most prestigious, the most legend, wait for it, dairy podcast show on all of YouTube. Welcome to Sean Soul Stars Legend Dairy Podcast from yours truly, Jay the Key Evans. <laughs> Thank you. I thank you so much for tuning in today. A lot of fun stuff. A lot of things we're going to do on the show. It's 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 going to be um, a good show today. And uh, yeah, so let's get right into the show. First um, order, don't forget. Um, coming soon to my other channel, Carmen Codman Estrada Pictures it is going to be a video where I review this awesome track jacket by T Fox. Hannah Fox, and also got another, the, the uh, limited edition, literally, fire merch logo from Lance Stewart, so it's gonna be, a, uh, it's going to be awesome, so stay tuned for that, well anyway, thank you so much, and, uh, let's talk about Extreme Rules, it was a, uh, pretty, pretty good pay-per-view and it was I think you know Undertaker had a phenomenal match you know way better than him versus Goldberg right and uh, him and Roman Reigns they had a pretty good match you know pretty solid and of course they pitched up the one I thought they were going to lose for a second but no Roman Reigns and Undertaker picked up the win it was pretty cool you know, and see what happens next for The Undertaker. I think he has, I know he has, I think he said he might have another match at, at, uh, SummerSlam. So we'll see about that. Hopefully not as much. I would love it. A classic match that would be Undertaker versus Sting. But 20 years ago. Not now. 
you know, a lot you can agree with that, you know, what to happen with him versus gold, but hopefully they learn, they be, you know, realize, eh, let's not take that risk, right? Well, Shane McMahon, he's still fairly young. He was able to have the upper strength. It wasn't hot. So he had uh, the, the upper strength to be able to lift himself up to make the choke slam look awesome. So, yes. Then you also had Kofi Cockwag, Kofi Kingston. Kingston retained the WWE Championship. And then, of course, you had... Um, uh, Finn Balor lost the Intercontinental Championship, sadly, to Shinsuke Nakamura on the middle course. Um, you had Seth Rollins and, and, and Becky Lunch retaining their respective championships against Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. You know? Right? But guess who showed up? Who cashed in? The Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar. What a good match. And Brock Lesnar cashed in. He is now the three time. And what a match. And what a match. And I believe he will hold it until WrestleMania. So, it's going to be great. And sadly, yes, Seth Rollins gets his rematch. Seth Rollins is well, not going to win. He's not going to take back that title. He does not deserve to be champion. He low blow Brock. He cheated to be champion in the first place. He does not deserve that title. Okay? People can argue Brock Lesnar doesn't deserve to be part-timer. Yeah, being never cheats to win like Seth Rollins did. You know, so we'll see what happens. And also you have, um, don't forget this Monday on Raw. It is going to be the Raw reunion. And to be or not to be is not the question. To be, the question is, will it be better than Raw 25? We got Stone Cold's going to be there. Eric Bischoff. Hopefully, hopefully Stone Cold stuns Eric Bischoff, or maybe even Vince McMahon, right? And then also, you're going to see maybe Hogan, a lot of good superstars are going to be there, the Nature Boy, Rick Flair, the game. And here on the show, I give out spoilers. Spoilers. And here's a spoiler for you. I know it pains me to say this. I, I know I'm but as you know, The Rock will not be there that evening. Sadly. If he wasn't there for the 25, he ain't going to be here for this one. So, who knows? He might surprise us all. <laughs> you know, we'll find out. But, right? And, uh, and also, I'm not 100% sure, but also who may, may or may not be there, as you know, is Brock Lesnar. May not be there. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway. Anyway. Um, also we got, we got a lot of good stuff going on. And also stay tuned. Speaking of the WWE also stay tuned. Right. Uh, uh, stay tuned. You may see my videos. For Extreme Rules. J.D. Kevins took on. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. For the WWE Championship. Right? And they also had Roman Reigns taking on Shane McMahon. And a lot of good matches. You had um, also, you also had, you had uh, Trish Stratus versus Ember Moon. A lot of good matches. Check out my channel. And then also stay tuned. Because next is not SummerSlam. No, no, no. In two weeks. In my universe, it is going to be Cyber Sunday, where you guys will be able to vote for the stipulations and matches. And you may have seen it on my channel already, or you may have seen it. Go follow the GTS Wrestling Group on Facebook. It is the one 
I forget how many members are on there, but Jay's on there. Uh, and a lot of the GTS guys are on there. Grills that are on there, but a lot of the GTS guys are on there, which is pretty cool. But on there, I posted a video, a little snippet of the aftermath. I haven't uploaded. I don't know if I'll upload yet or not. By the time the video goes up, but I did try to upload. Um, but I did. Uh, you may see on this on Raw is going to be J.D. Kevin's. Defending in the Open Challenge yet again against who? T.J.P. But the match did not get to finish. We do not have a definitive winner. Since J still the one that is still champion though. Because who interfered? A.J. Styles and Luke Gallows. So I guess we know who Jay Kim is going to be facing. But you guys get to vote what stipulation the match is going to be come Cyber Sunday. It is going to be... Legend, wait for it, Derek. So stay tuned for that. And a lot of good stuff. And speaking of WWE, okay? Amazing. Out of all of these, are to be the most best figures that come out with them in the history of our sport. You had, um, I'm excited, you got the man, finally, Becky Lynch. Her own figure with the man. Right? And you're also going to get first time in the line in the elite form. I think elite. Trish Stratus with the new attire. You're also going to see Lita. We're going to get um, uh, China of all people. China. And then we're going to get in elite form. Classy. Freddy. Blassy. The old school. Vince McMahon from when he had the actual black hair and when he was like in the 80s Vince McMahon he wore the different coat suits and, and then also um another AJ Styles another awesome Finn Balor Bobby Lashley just amazing and I love how we're getting a lot of superstars from the ruthless aggression era we got Booker T from that era we're gonna have I think we're gonna get also Shawn Michaels from that era, just a lot of, also D'Lo Brown, what awesome is that? Now, a couple of years ago, we did get Triple H from that era when he had the such time and it comes with the World Heavyweight Championship, but he's actually getting his, it's going to be great, man. A lot of good possibilities you can see. It's it's going to be awesome. You want to get sure to get those sets. It's going to be awesome. I'm hyped for it. And it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. And uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm excited. It's going to be great, man. I'm excited about that. So stay tuned. And also with, also, as you know, Lance Stewart. He, um, Lance Stewart is now back in L.A. He actually bought, in a, got an apartment out there. And it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, and I don't know who's I don't know who's gonna go out there with them. Two weeks till we find out that person's not supposed to be able to go out there. In two weeks, so you can rule out. I think it ain't agent. It's not gonna be his roommate, but it will find me. I doubt it because with the dog, it's probably not gonna be Cody. I would say James or Mike is my my best bet. Okay. I cannot wait to see what happens out there. Some board rides, some good stuff. Right? And uh, he is living in uh, Studio City instead of the heart of Hollywood. So he's living in Studio City now. So let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm excited to see what's going to go down. And uh, yeah, so we'll see. So hopefully he don't get noise complaints even when he's in New Jersey. Because y'all know he used to be in New Jersey. And he still get noise complaints from LA. And let's hope Lance, do us a favor. Do not... Play with the Ouija board. Don't do that this time. Right? So we'll see what happens. And then also, um, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. The first time he's doing it by himself. Remember the last time he first moved the very first, no, it's second apartment. Second apartment, I think. Right? The one with the big old nice windows and all that. He actually had a... Um, his mom came out there with them, so this time he did it all by himself, set up all by himself, had his own furniture, he's gonna be delivered in a couple of days, so I'm excited to see what happens. And guess what, when he went to LA, guess what? 
He went to go evict it out there also for Bitcoin, right? And he gets out there with the boogie. He didn't know at first. Boogie was out there. And um, also, I um, think, uh, kid behind the camera, angry grandpa's um, son, Michael, was out there. So pretty cool. But guess who else was out there for Bitcoin? Guess who else was out there? They all sharing the same house together. Big jug of nuggets. I really want to know, man. What are you doing? No. That's like, oh, he's cool. He's cool, but yeah, he freaking tried to kill you in the car for that. But when he said boogie, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Remember, guys, you saw it in Jesse McJugger Nuggets' channel a couple of months ago. You saw he had a little thing with him and uh, Boogie. I'm thinking, wait a minute, lad. I want to be like, wait a minute. Boogie. You mean, isn't that the same boogie, the one that tried to throw a plate at your head? The one that did try to, just, that did, just, that hit your car? I don't know. I have no idea. We'll see what happens. But anyway, anyway, luckily Jesse's not there permanently. He was there for an event. So hopefully he's gone. But anyway, um, yes, yeah, so hopefully, yes, you know, stick to Aiden Land, stick to all that. You see the prank that they did on Boogie? Hilarious, hilarious, pretty funny. And then, um, Lance was like, you need, to, you need to make some connection out here in Hollywood. Who, who should I hook up with, collab with? Who wants to collab with me? Hello? Someone that he knows very well. They've been they're friends and they've hung out when he was in LA before a couple of times. He cut videos. Tanner Fox. Come on, Tanner. You should invite him to his house. You never been to my, you never been to Tanner's house, right? You should go out there and visit. Imagine. They can do a couple videos together, imagine. And I don't know, I don't even have said it yet. I don't, I don't always plan on bringing one of his cars out here like he did. Well, last time he didn't bring his car here, last time he had a car. First he had a Mustang, and then he ended up getting a BMW M4 in LA. He flew it to New Jersey, he went back to New Jersey permanently. Now he's back right here. He's gonna go back and forth. So my thing though is, Lance, bring your car out here. You know what you do? Last time he had an M4 out here. Switch it, bring your RA out here, Lance. We can have the, the, the race. We all have been waiting for Lance. The Audi R8 versus Guazzilla 2.0. Oh, that would be. And who would win that race? Don't forget, Tanner got his car all souped up and all spiffed up. But also, don't forget, also, recently Lance got his car spiffed. So remember, he had that, that tune or something put in, so it's even louder and faster. So I'm excited. That would be a cool race I want to see. So we'll see what happens. So I'm excited with that. And that's how I watched, I knew about Tanner Fox. I was watching his Tanner's, I mean Lance's videos and seeing the one Zoe video where Tanner was in there and all that. And then ended up going to Tanner's channel, watching a couple videos and here I am now. Got the merch, subscribe, so it's awesome. It is awesome, I'm excited, I'm hyped. So pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. So let's see, see what happens in the near future and uh, yeah. And also, I um, went to the movies this Sunday, went to go see um, Yesterday. Pretty good movie, pretty good movie. Imagine a world without the Beatles. Without the world without the Beatles, man. <laughs> imagine that, imagine that. So I'm excited, I'm excited. In July, we are almost... We are in the middle of July, so I'm excited about that. August, I'm excited because August 6th is Lucio Ball's birthday, and I'm going to be going to the movies with my mom, and we're going to go see I Love Lucy. Get your tickets now, people, for it's sold out. It's probably sold out, but I Love Lucy, five episodes, and the cool thing is mom is nobody. I don't let her know ahead of time, so she can let her boss know they're early and all that, but guess what, though? There are five of them, like, there are five, five episodes, so basically two and a half hours, and it's cool because... They're like one of like her favorite episodes, Vitamin and Benjamin, The Chocolate Factory, Will William, one with William Holden, a lot of good stuff, so I'm excited, so I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I even seen Annabelle too. You know, so I didn't get to see any part of like I got the hell out of there. <laughs> got the hell out of there. But but beginning though, why I seen though, it wasn't as bad. It wasn't scary at all, really, not not much. Not much. It's not like you've seen the trailer. I guess maybe at the end part probably gets a lot scary, but the joy of the movie, I was alright. Oh, well. But anyway, guys, I'm excited. And oh, guess what? I'm excited. 
because on Monday, on Monday I'm getting a brand new t-shirt. And who's on the t-shirt? None other than, none other than Miss Joan Crawford. As you know, I'm working on watching her filmography, the sound films. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm almost done. I need four more films to go. And this week, I'm going to be, next Friday, I'm going to order two more. And I'll almost be done. So it's pretty cool. So I already seen, um, this one's pretty cool because I needed two movies I needed to see was, last time was Autumn Leaves and the story of Esther Costello, right? I couldn't find them on Amazon as single. This one came up, but I look at it. Oh shoot, it has the two movies I need to see, so I got it. But you get this one, it's, you should get it. It's really cool. It's called Joan Crawford in the 50s. And you get four movies for the price of two, which is pretty cool. And it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, Harriet Craig, Queen B. Good movies, good, good movies. And, um,. I recommend seeing all these films. Autumn Leaves, pretty cool. I like Autumn Leaves. You know, she meets this guy. You know, this guy. And she's, you know, and he's younger than she is. And she's like, why don't you meet someone your own age, right? But he likes her. So they get together and they're together. And then um, she gives in. They get together. And then basically come to find out he had an ex-wife. An ex-wife. Right? And, uh, but they didn't mean nothing. She didn't mean nothing. But I ended up finding out that his ex-wife and his dad was crazy. That's why he never was talked to them and all that. Right? But, oh man. One part of the movie, but he was messed up in the head too. Right? He did all these problems, but he never owned up to anything. Like one part when, when Joan Crawford goes to see cause him and his, she was surprised because her and the guy she's with, they got married, obviously. So what ended up happening was... His ex-wife came by and asked to sign papers. She didn't know who she was, and then she found out what the heck, so she ended up signing. The, uh, so basically, she comes back. Well, where's the papers? Oh, he's she's sick. He can't. You can't. You can't be bothered with it now. You can't be bothered with it. With it now. So then she, then she says, "Oh well, I can't believe you're with them. He's crazy." You must be crazy. You must, and the dad's like, you must be mad too to be with him. And she defends him. Oh no, he is more sane than both of you. And she lets him have it. But I guess, I don't know, his head's messed up. He thought that she was in collusion with them against him. Oh yeah, you're with them, aren't you? Tell me I'm crazy. No, darling. And he slaps her. I don't really cry in movies. I don't. But that one was a little bit of a tear to a little one. And she said, not that part, when he says it, she said, I, I swear, darling, you know, and, 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 and she's telling the truth, right? And he slaps her again, she falls on the floor, and, and she, and, and the part that was sad, honestly, he gets a typewriter, and he's got to throw it on her, but her, but she's laying her face down, right? She moves out of the way, but her head was still there, and smashes, and she's like, ah, he starts crying, like, oh, that's sad. But what happened was is that they end up taking him to a mental hospital and he gets there for a couple of months, gets treatment and all that. And then, and then before he would had he would ask, What happened to your hand? Like, he wouldn't admit to anything, like he didn't want to admit to anything. At the end, she was going there to say goodbye and all that stuff because he didn't ever wrote her a single letter while he was in there, right? So she's like, Ah, this is it, whatever but then he ends up coming but then when she wants to see him, right, they're going to discharge him, and then she, yeah, I, I came to say what I need to say, you know what I'm saying, I know, you know, you do what you want to do, and he says, wait, don't you want to, you gave me a chance to say hello, well, I didn't know you wanted a chance to say hello, and then he's like, looks at her, and then he looks at the hand and kisses her, and he's like, how's the hand, the hand that I, the hand that I hit, I smashed with a typewriter. And she was surprised because he uh, admitted to it. She knew he was better, so she kissed him. And then there was it and all that. It was a good movie. Very, very good movie. Go check it out. And also stay tuned. In about a month or so, I will be done. I'm going to make a full video on my other channel talking about a lot of the films. 
has a cool cell I want to put in the videos and a t-shirt. And speaking of the t-shirt, guess what? I used this website before called um, the Uber Prince, right? Uber Prince. I used it before and um, it's a good website. I made like a t-shirt like for Christmas. I made my family, a lot of my family members t-shirt of my grandmother, right? She passed away like six, seven, about seven years ago. But not a memory shirt, just a picture of her, right? I made like an animation. I made a pretty cool picture of her, made it animated and put her famous saying, Weiss Me Mulder, right? And then her name in the bottom and all that. Pretty, it works. But, but I want to make the Joan Crawford shirt, right? So that's, I find a picture on this, the group I follow on Facebook called the Joan Crawford uh, something exchange, right? And I found this cool song posted, a good, nice picture, a nice picture of her, right? And I put it, put it big, right? So I did that, right? I get an email the next day. Oh, uh, it's copyrighted and we can't do it, you know, so maybe you can do another design. Really? So let me know. I tried custom me, right? The same day that I got the email. So I tried custom me, right? Tried it. And, um, and they said, well, maybe had it so it can come here in a week, right? So let me see if it's delayed or it can be, it can be delayed or if, if, if we need a if it's copyrighted because you need to get permission, right? We'll just see. I can't go to the mall because they do it at the mall, but the mall, they don't do it as, as the websites do it. Big print. You see the mall, only do like about this much. It's not that big. I don't want to do it at the mall. So I waited. Freaking got an email like what? A day or two later. Shipping confirmation. How can... I said I have to call and cancel the other order because it's on hold. I'm going to go to the other website. Call them up. And cancel it. My question though is, how come they can't do it, but if they uh, customer can do it, like it's not like same price too, but not, not like I gonna get it sell it. I'm gonna wear it. I looked on Amazon, right? For I think that I looked on Amazon, right? Why they got they have one of Joan Crawford, but it's one with her holding the wire hanger. It's stupid. They have nice shirts at Lucio Ball, Marilyn Monroe, right? I, right, hello. Maybe if I, if I want, if, if I can find one, I'm uh, sure with a picture of John Crawford, I wouldn't have to order it online. I have to try to make it myself. So, can't wait to get it. I'm excited for that. You would think TCM would do that. TCM would have a bunch of different, you know, t shirts with different actors on Clark Gable, Marilyn Monroe. You know, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah, let's talk about GTS today. A lot of stuff going on. First, we'll talk about Area 51. I'll talk about it later. But Grim, right? Don't trust Jimmy. Jimmy pissed off because he won the Intercontinental with he got thrown in the water, right? The guy he called, I forget his name, Keystar, but he called him Kobe Kingston, right? And, and all that, right? And it's crazy. He throws him in the water. So then Duop takes the title back, right? And then today Jimmy's like, Where's my title? And then Bond's all his K Fave broken and his supposedly tap on Bond's like, Shut up, Jimmy. And they end up fighting him, and it's like, really? And they end up like, fighting, right? And it's have a match. And then they end up getting attacked by um, Tony Emerald. Candlestick, candlestick. And they get him, just, ah, like, really bad. And Grim pulled him out to stop it. And Jimmy, what are you doing? He would have killed you. And Jimmy's like, I don't need you. And he tried to be friend, really? And he's like, Grim's trying to help him and all that. It wasn't for me. He would have killed you in that ring. You know what I'm saying? And he says, why well, can't, you know, seven years. You bury me on this show. Oh yeah. I helped you. I pulled you out of that ring. And Grim cares about the kid. Right? And then all of a sudden it's five and then all of a sudden Jimmy slaps Grim and they fight. And then he and he gets him and he throws him on the on these like um, wood pieces and like ah oh, logs I think. Wood logs and he ah oh, it was you know, real stuff too. And he gets in the ring and then Jimmy says, How would you fight his um uh uh Tony Emerald's son, they fight, wrestle the match, ding, 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 they fight, and then Tony Emerald, and then Grimm helps Jimmy win the match, right? Well, I don't need you, well, he, he, well, he was gonna, he was beating you down, he would've, he would've won, right, and come in there and step in, come on, and he goes up, and he picks up Jimmy, and they shake hands, Jimmy like this, and they shake hands, what Jimmy do? Kicks him, boom, controversy causes it, and that's it, and it's crazy, and, and it's, it's just, it's crazy, it's like, like, Grim, you know, that kid messed up in the head. 
something's wrong with that kid. Don't know what it is. Not Dr. Law, I'm not going to diagnose him, but he's crazy in the head. That's all I'm going to say. But it's crazy. Like, you know, it's like Grim. It's Grim's fault too because, like, see, Grim is like alligator people. People who do all the time, they put their hand, like, meta uh, uh, metaphorically, you know, they put their hand, like, in, in, in the water, alligator bites him, right? But they keep putting the hand in, they wonder why he keeps biting him. Like, you freaking put the same goodness. Don't, no, you can't do it. Well, see, I don't know, but I don't know, Grim. Nothing you can do, leave him alone. Like, yes, I know Grim wants Jimmy to understand that he really cares about him. You know, he really does, but Jimmy has his own thoughts in his head and, and does what he wants to do, and it's and nothing, you can, nothing you can change him. Can't change him, Grim. You can't do that. But anyway, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. And also, lastly, Area 51, a lot of people, including Grimm, supposedly are going to go at 1.5 million. Sign this petition on Facebook. Don't go there. There's <laughs> They're going to go there. Oh, damn it. There's nothing there. There's weapons. There's nuclear things they test out, but there's no aliens, people. Okay? And that's not a prediction. That is a spoiler. If there was aliens, people, trust me, we would know about it. If there was aliens, we would know by now there's aliens. There's dinosaurs because there's bones. Aliens are no proof. There's no evidence. People have stories that there's their epic been abducted and there's aliens and they've seen them and all it is. Oh man, far out man. I've seen some aliens. There's no such thing, people, okay? They see, you see movies. It's CGI. CGI. It's not like in dog movies where they use actual dogs as the actors in the movies. No, there's no, they don't do that with aliens. CGI. Back in the 50s, 40s, and you did, someone came up with this cool, weird creature thing, and they called it, let's call it an alien or whatever. And that's how they probably came up with it, and now people think it's real. They don't exist. And if it was real people, it would say right there, Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, it would say right there, God created the heavens and the earth and the universe, and in the, in, in the universe, the other planets, some planet, other planets had other forms of life, right? It doesn't say that, so, sorry, you can't prove, you can't prove, you can't prove me wrong. Right, brain went wrong. It's just, uh, talk to a couple of people, and I think it's silly too. I don't get it. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Let's see what happens. Sorry about this. Can also stay tuned. Hopefully, next week we can have, uh, as I'm recording this, I'll be messing up with your response soon. But hopefully, next week we'll have Tanner Black on the show, baby. Tanner Black. That'd be awesome. WWE Fan Talk Show, but he's Tanner Black. Awesome. And we'll talk about things I also want to talk about. The travesty, the injustice that happened last week when he had his first ever talk show at SoCal Pro Wrestling, Tanner Talks. The disrespect they showed him. Like getting him some fold away table that they have at Walmart. Come on. He should have a nice oak wood table, a nice chair like this. A nice desk like mine. It's ridiculous. We're going to talk about DTS, we're talking about WE. We're going to have all kinds of things to stay tuned for that. So we had an amazing day. And now our subject matter for the end of the show, our closing subject matter. Today I want to talk about, um, you know, teaching your kids at a young age to be polite, doing things. Because um, I was listening <laughs> To Dr. Laura today, actually, I was listening to her, and some caller called in, I guess, her daughter, right? You know, daughter and her, it has to do with her daughter and her grandkids. Okay, her grandkids, her grandkids came in, you know, and they're very rude and disrespectful to their mom, right, her daughter, right? And, you know, and Dr. Laura says, you need to tell them that. That Dr. Laura says that if that was me, I would say you do, you ne you will never disrespect her like that in front of me or in my house again. 
And she said, her house in front of her mother because you cannot control what happens at their house because the mom's a, uh, she called her a limp chick, right? And she said, exactly, you know, like, and, and, you know, and what would you, and how did she learn that? They don't know because her mom, you know, when, when, I, when I put up with that, right? And she says, well, her daughter's, like, her daughter's, her daughter argues back with them. That's all she does. See, you don't argue. Make firm statements. Hey, don't do that. And you, and you be firm, right? And she, like, Dr. Moore says, who would your father would have done? Oh, man. And she, she, the lady was like, I don't know. I can't even describe. You're exactly. It's not that way anymore. Exactly. You were even like a, like a, a email Dr. Laura read where this where when she taught this lady taught her son when they were when her son was younger, he would get presents right because her her the family wasn't like close by, so he'd get presents in the mail, whatever. He couldn't cash checks. He couldn't play with his toys, games we got whatever until he would call or write a thank you letter, right? Which is a good thing to teach your kids. And then, as he's older, he still does that, right? And it teaches them the right thing. And when you do it when they're younger, teach them when they're younger. When they're older, it becomes the normal. I always remember my life. I went to my grandma's house every day of my life because she babysat me. I went to her house, you know, and she went when I was in high school, right? And I remember at a very young age, very, very young age, I would leave my dishes in the sink. I was a little older, still young, though. My uncle who lived there was like, well, I two uncles who lived there, and one of them told me, you know, yeah, you can wash your dishes, you know, saying there's no maids in this house. And it stuck with me. I learned that at a young age, you know, home. Now, a lot of times mom would be like, I'm, I'm still cooking, or, or I need to wash dishes anyway, just leave it there. But if she's not cooking, or whatever, or she's sitting down relaxing, watching TV, I wash my own dishes because there's no maids in the house. I learned that at a young age, and you learn things when you're younger. And when you're older, they become normal. Being polite, being gracious, how to treat, and how to be respectful to adults. Opening doors for ladies, opening, doing things like that, which is pretty cool. So we'll see what happens. So that's pretty cool. So you learn things when you're younger. Teach your kids when you're younger. So when you're older, it becomes normal. It becomes natural. Okay? Which is pretty cool. And, um... Uh, yeah, let's uh, listen. We all can learn and teach our kids and all that. And, you know, how to be polite and how to be gracious. Right? And be firm. Don't be a limp chick. Don't be a limp dick. Be firm with your kids. You know, you can tell them, don't do that. You know, take away the cell phones and do whatever you need to do. And, you know, and, and that's why she says with kids, you know, they, you know, they don't value, even adults, don't men. Don't value anything they don't have to work hard for. They don't. So I hope you guys are tuning in today. And uh, yeah, so I also want to share with you real quick. To end the show about... You guys may have known back in the 40s how they talked, right? Sorry, we're going on around here. But it wasn't just the audio. It was the way they talked with the transatlantic accent. It's real easy. You better learn your language. You can find it on, on, online. But what you do is you drop the R. So instead of saying cart, you say cot or market or carpet, right? Or that you, you use the ass sound. You go like um, ah. So saying say, say can't say cot or um, rot or or um, top. And also the T's. You said the same. Pronounce it like D, like say kitty, you say kitty, kitty, T, you spell it T. And the, even the, the ED, you say, instead of saying Y, you say EH, so kitty, happy. And that was the transatlantic accent back in the day. It was They taught it up until World War II. And that's to the end of World War II, they taught it in schools. And that's why I always really have that. It's funny because I'm watching a clip of the Ellen Dinner show. Where Emma Stone, she was in this movie that was that was um, themed in the '40s, and she hired, she knew that's how they talked back in the day, especially Captain Hepburn, right? And um, and she was in the she says 
she knew she always wanted to do that 40s style Catherine Hepburn you know a lot of these old school ladies roles right and basically you know she she was excited and she hired a voice coach for her. she got to learn she learned how to do the transatlantic accent and she goes in there to the director thinking I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk like Catherine Hepburn right and the director in regular voice no you're not that's kind of stupid though because it's like if i were making movies in the 40s right i i would i would do that because it would make it more authentic to how it used to be right they didn't talk like normal like we do nowadays they talked they talked with a transatlantic accent and don't forget don't confuse it with british it was between it was a mix of the uh, the british and america that's how it was in, in between well, not every word is, is not British accent. Don't say, say, um, I love my kitty. You just say, I love my kitty. Right? You just say the word that you have to use that accent is when you use that word, not the entire every word you use. They don't need it, don't use it. But it's just crazy. That's how I would do, right? I get it though, because they don't, they don't, they don't teach that in school anymore. So a lot of people even actors probably don't know that don't know that language, that accent, like a transatlantic accent. So therefore, you know, it's it'll cost more money, more time used to train them and hire coaches and teach them how to do it and hopefully they can they can pick it up really fast. Right? Because when they film every every hour, every second there's money being spent. So I get it, but I would do it though. Why not, right? It's fun, it's different, and it's something that they use back in the day and make my movies from the 40s more, um, more, uh, uh, authentic. So, yeah, so it's cool. The trans, look it up, transatlantic accent. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Legendary Show podcast. Stay tuned for Cyber Sunday two weeks. And also stay tuned, um, in a couple of weeks. We're going to do another Q&A with Cameo Q&A with Jay the Key Evans is going to be awesome. I have a couple uh, questions for him and all that. So stay tuned. Hoping next week we have Tanner Black in the show. Stay tuned. Hopefully, cross your fingers. And it was cool that he actually, I made a video on him in the game, right? I made him in the game and he fought um, Tanner Fox. And he actually shared the video on his, on his YouTube channel. That was pretty cool. Thank you so much, Tanner. And we'll see you guys next time. And we'll see you, Tanner. And, uh, and what do you know? But fitting, right? Our second guest on the show. My second guest on the show. At first, had Jay Evans, right? But my second guest on the show is Tanner Black. And, uh, and just like Jay, Tanner is also legend. Wait for it. Darren. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And for me and Jay, finish that with the top, the fist pumping. And that's why I love the song. Go check it out on YouTube. Type in uh, EDM Bot September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. There's two versions. The one that I play on the show, that's the one, 2K19, me and Jay's theme song, Legendary's theme song, I should say. That's um, that's the one you want. I like it because he likes EDM, I do too, it's pretty cool. And also, I like old school, my first love, so it's kind of makes the best of both worlds, which is pretty cool. But the funny thing is, I can never, I've yet to find on EDM Bot, the YouTube channel, another song, another old school song. You know, they, they, I've seen they have, I heard they have Pure Imagination, they did one of... Uh, Singing in the rain, but I get to find another old school song with the same vibe as the one they did, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I love that song. I love the EDM version. It's so awesome. And you can fist pump. And, and trust me, that's why it's a legendary song because if, if you can't fist pump, we ain't going to use it. So I hope you guys see you guys next time. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Legend, wait for it. Damn it. <laughs>